How's it going folks, it's Rob here, and in today's clip I'm going to give you a bit of a look at what we do have growing on around the place, even though the yard still looks like a bit of a mess. Uh, we've got some stuff going up, um, growing up here, I should say, in the house, and we've also got a few bits and pieces I've started off downstairs. So to begin with, up here on the veranda, we have a bit of an experiment growing on. Uh, this is non-recirculating hydroponics, or most people know it as the crack key method of hydroponics. Uh, basically what we have is six pak choy, growing in little neck cups. The neck cups have got some perlite in there. Uh, what I did was I cheated uh, yesterday. I potted up some uh, pak choy we bought in a punnet after I had washed out the soil from the roots and separated the plants. Uh, popped them into these little neck cups with some perlite and then uh, popped them into the lids of these small little tote or storage containers. And underneath them, helps if you unclip it, Robert. Uh, underneath them, uh, we have the neck cups just sitting in the nutrient rich solution. And now the idea is you only put one lot of solution in there and uh, leafy greens in particular will use it up fairly fast and as they grow the water level will drop and this little space around the top here, whoops, around the top of the neck cup uh, where the roots come out, um, they uh, will take up the air or the oxygen in particular um, to help the plant grow. So there's no need for any bubblers under there to provide oxygen for the roots of the plants. Uh, so it's a pretty neat little system. There's no waste really. Uh, at the end there will be a little bit of liquid left over. And generally what happens in um, hydroponics... Oh, Lizzie's come to say g'day. Hello Lizzie. She doesn't want to talk, she wants to chew a pig. Anyway, back to the hydroponics. So we were talking about nutrients. What I've decided to do is go with a company called um, Australian Organics, I think they're called, or Agricultural Organics. Um, these guys are an Aussie-based company and they uh, create nutrients based from plants and um, fungi. So that's where they derive their nutrients from. And they also have to take some minerals from the earth because I mean, plants take up minerals. So yeah, there's some things like some of the iron, I think they mine directly. Um, then again, so do other fertilizer companies. So I thought I'd go with um, guys who are at least trying to do it as organic as possible. Uh, oh, by the way, if you guys that think this is a bloom mix, that's just their range is called bloom. This is the grow formula. And then there's a bloom formula, which you would use for fruiting crops, which I will have um, just down in here. I'm going to um, set up some crack key buckets. And in these guys down here, I'm going to have some capsicums. Uh, you folks over in the States would know them as sweet peppers. So we have a bull's horn uh, sweet pepper or capsicum. So I've got um, some of them in this, these two front cells. And then I've got some old um, red Marconi um, bought from Baker's um, Creek Seeds years ago. <laughs> They're well and truly out of date. I have uh, contemplated going and getting a um, pepper a capsicum from the big box store or nursery, uh, an advanced one and popping that in there after I wash the soil from the roots and then one of each of the others in the other bucket. We'll just wait and see. I've also got this uh, poor sick little basil that we took pity on and bought that was marked down at the supermarket. I've used a little bit in salads and things like that, but yeah, this plant could probably do with a bit of a feed as well. I think these guys are just grown in a coconut coir um, vermiculite sort of mix. There's not a lot of nutrition in there. So Bianca actually suggested grabbing another bucket from downstairs and setting it up there. The only downfall of having another bucket up here is Lizzie will lose her um, sunbathing spot first thing in the morning when we're out here having coffee. Oh, well, I'm having coffee, she's not. Um, so, yeah, we'll wait and see. We might do that yet. Um, down here, another thing we have on the grow are some mushrooms. Um, these are some oysters, three different types. Um, these are some king oysters. Uh, they were set uh, on the 22nd, which I think is about eight days ago now. And these guys... They've actually got some growth. I don't know if you can make it out in there. There's actually some growth coming out through the cardboard. Oh, better explain what I do. Um, basically, I take a sterilized knife and um, chop away the outer edges of a piece of mushroom, get some nice, clean, hopefully sterile mushroom from the center, and then pop it in between some cardboard that has been soaked in water. Um, I like to soak the cardboard in hot water to kill off any um, nasties there. And then, yeah, you just put a couple of slithers of those mushrooms in between those layers of cardboard and away you go. Um, so we've got the king oysters there, the only ones we've seen with any um, growth out the sides. There's none in those guys. And yesterday we bought what I think look like tan oyster mushrooms. Um, so I took some of them before I popped them in last night's dinner. 
So yeah, hopefully um, we might get something from these guys. Ba basically what you do from there is once, once it colonizes the cardboard, you can then break little bits off and put that into another cellulose feed source. And then hopefully the mushrooms will take off. And after a couple of weeks, you can um, open them to some air and you'll end up getting some oyster mushrooms out. Uh, we had fairly good success in the past. These guys here will be um, living downstairs, I think, down in the laundry. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, yeah, we'll end up with a decent harvest fairly soon. So as you saw, I've taken some video on how we've done all this. So uh, if it's a success, uh, fingers crossed it will be. I don't think there's any contamination in there. I will release a video to YouTube just showing you the process all the way through. Uh, to the first harvest. But I think that's pretty much all it for up here. Are you gonna come down, Lizzie? You gonna come down? Or are you gonna keep squeaking your pig? You don't know, do you? So just under the deck, uh, we have the veggie pod. She's been going for a couple of weeks now. As you can see, the uh, rainbow chart is doing okay in there. And we have some beans up the back. The beans were a little bit slow to kick off, but they are starting to set flowers now. There's a number of flowers on that one down in there. Now, this soil probably could have been fed up a little bit better, but you know, um, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. I don't really want to go digging compost through there. I might grab some of the fish emulsion that I'm using to run the aquaponics and just give it a bit of a water in a week or so's time. I'm, I'm, I'm really tempted to take off some of these younger leaves now, um, but Bianca wants them to grow nice and large before we harvest, so we'll just have to wait and see. Um, down here, we have some of the pak choy that was left over, we have three. There's one there, one between the beans and the silver beet, and another one over there. So hopefully they'll do fairly well. Uh, down the front here, I have um, four root pouches of potatoes. So we haven't, <laughs> uh, if you've been a follower of our channel for a while, you know I don't have the best of luck with potatoes. Every now and then I get a decent crop. So what I've decided to do is get some 22 liter uh, root pouches, uh, pop a uh, spud that has an eye forming, or at least one eye forming on it in each uh, bag, and then covered it up. And after the potato uh, breaks the ground there, I'm going to top it up with a bit more soil. Not because it'll grow potatoes all the way up the stem, it's just because potatoes tend to come out of the soil a bit once they form, and I just want to cover them up with some soil so they don't go all green. Uh, now the idea behind this one here is it will just be uh, filled up with water like the other wicking trays we've got and that will water the spuds in there and hopefully we'll get a decent harvest. I was thinking about um, popping them out of the way up here somewhere but we still have some dubious paint on the rest of the house um, and I don't really want those paint flakes falling down in there and contaminating the soil. Um, as for the rest of the yard, uh, well, it's still in a bit of a holding pattern at the moment. Uh, we still haven't finalised everything with the bank. Uh, once we do, the first thing we're going to do is start terracing a part of the yard up here. Um, yeah, we're just waiting for some surveyors, bits and pieces to come back. We had to end up engaging a surveyor just to make sure that this fence line is all okay. So once the surveyor comes back to the, um, the certifier and tells us um, that, yeah, the fence is pretty much well where it needs to be because the issue we're having is the corner of the house here uh, to here has to be at least 900 uh, millimetres and because there's no um, signed certificate to say that it is so, we needed to pay a uh, surveyor to come and do it. Well, just to give you a look too, these are some of the broad ripple yellow currants we're getting. They're just volunteers and it's always the volunteers growing where they shouldn't that grow the largest we found. I'll just run through a few other bits and pieces that are um, going on here. Uh, we've decided on the layout of the yard or another version of the layout of the yard. It's something that's just going to continually evolve. Uh, these bananas will end up going over here. We've already got one in situ. Um, banana will end up going over there. All the aquaponics is moving that way about. Um, actually, we've already marked it out to the um, lower side of that besser brick or of cinder block there. So that will be the end of the uh, roof structure over the aquaponics. And we're going to have some bananas here mainly because they're going to be out of the way and there's nothing behind them that can be shaded that we're going to worry about. Um, so we've got a place in the yard for the bananas. They were the one plant I was really concerned about. I've tidied them up by taking a lot of the dead branches off and I've just got them down there in a pile and they'll end up going over in that compost cage over there. And all these pouches, they're all going to be picked up and placed in this area over here. I need to clean this timber out. I started this morning, but um, didn't finish it. But we are going to look at putting them probably up the back there. 
Uh, those fish tanks, uh, both of them will be coming out through the week. I'll be taking down some of the aquaponics and I'll just be running the um, three beds we've got down there um, just via water coming out of the sump, but more about that in a minute. Um, yeah, so the pouches will go up towards the back and Bianca and I are tossing up whether we should use this chop and flip. So this system here is the uh, chop and flip um, system that we use to film the chop and flip aquaponic system clip. It's missing its cap. I do have a replacement one. Uh, the bell siphon um, uh, bulkhead fitting is still in there. I've got the pump and all the plumbing and whatnot. And what we're tossing up and thinking about doing is setting that up as a flood and drain hydroponic system and just setting it up on the corner there using those same organic um, nutrients in there and trying to use that to grow some a few bits and pieces because the rest of the gardens down the back are the garden beds that we want to build won't be done for quite a while yet uh, and all these blueberries and bits and pieces i'm actually thinking about trying to keep the blueberries down here and then we'll try and move the larger beds uh, root pouch beds and that um, sort of stuff over here down here with the aquaponics, uh, we've already made a bit of a start cloning bits and pieces from here so we can um, retire all these grow beds and clear it out, ready for um, when we get the chance to put a cover over here. Uh, so Bianca's already taken some Brahmi, it's in a nice little pot on the veranda, and she's also taken off a um, clone from her plant over there. And yeah, I didn't see any point filling in the hole that the Gallingal left there. And we've got cuttings of the mushroom herb and the other bits and pieces in there. Uh, the one big concern we do have is getting the cardamom out. Um, I, if I'm taking it out of the um, aquaponics, I really want to put it in the ground straight away. Uh, either that or maybe I might just have to sacrifice the bulk of the plant and um, just break off some of these smaller little rhizome sections and start again. Uh, the thing with the um, cardamom is it takes uh, two to four years, depending on climate, to get the actual seed pods, which is the cardamom seed that you use in cooking. Um, so it may set us back before our first harvest, but hey, you can still use the, the leaves. Just quickly before I sign off, folks, I thought I might just mention a few Aussies out there that I do sell these root pouches. Uh, there will be a link um, that appears at the end, either up in the corner or somewhere else, uh, to taking you to the website that gives you a bit of a blurb about the root pouches and how they're good for air pruning and that sort of thing. Um, they're made from recycled water bottles and natural fibres. Um, so there's a price list there for Aussies and folks in Southeast Asia if you want to order them. There's also a link over to our Amazon Associate store uh, for you guys in the States that want to um, maybe pick up a couple. I've got a page there with just the root pouches and some aquaponics bits and pieces. So it'd be fantastic if you could uh, suss that out if you're interested in getting some of these root pouches. So one more look at my hairy mug, folks, and I'll let you go. I just really wanted to thank all you folks who've been subscribed for years and you newer subscribers for coming along and giving us a thumbs up and sharing the clips around. I know this one probably isn't very shareable, but I really do appreciate it. I've seen guys go out there and um, share whole playlists, the aquaponic build ones and the ginger growing ones. I, you know, I really do appreciate it. That sort of support means a lot to us. Uh, and you folks who are supporting us through Subscribestar and also the YouTube membership program, thank you very much as well. Um, we've actually got a couple who, who um, are I suppose you call them business supporters. Um, what I do is I've linked their businesses or even just their Facebook pages if they don't have a business down below the clips and you can always pop down there, click on their links and see what they're all about and show them some love, I'd really appreciate it. Also got a couple of people who um, just every now and then I find a couple of dollars in the uh, PayPal account, I really appreciate it. And over the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of locals support us in a way that I was never expecting. Anita and John, thank you very much folks. Uh, they've been dropping off IBCs. Um, IBCs that have had material in it that is um, pretty much all food grade that we can clean out and use um, to make up a couple of aquaponic systems. Uh, the idea is I want to use them um, to do some how-to clips, actually just sort of set up behind there, um, make up a couple of how-to clips to post to YouTube. A real, a, I'm, to tell the truth, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. I've just done about two or three different cuts. I mean, all I can really say is thank you very much, John and Anita. And I do hope that the uh, the sweet spuds that you went home with grow some decent slips and you get to grow some of those um, sunshine Hawaiian purples yourself. Uh, and I dare say there'll be a few other plants we'll share with you guys once you move into your new digs. Um, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much all going to stop rambling on now. I, I do hope you're all well and happy and that your own gardens are booming. Definitely a lot better than ours. And I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one. Sorry for the shake.